Good day. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of the OneDrive and SharePoint Performance Mini-Series. Today we are talking about an overview of performance considerations. And what you'll see is that we are compiling a list of seasons and episodes focused primarily on performance optimizations you can do. My name is Scott Stewart and I'm a Senior Program Manager in the OneDrive and SharePoint Engineering team. And one of my primary focus areas is on performance for customers. Today's agenda will be covering cloud versus on-prem. And really why that's important is understanding the architecture you're coming, you're potentially coming from. You may never have been an on-prem, but understanding the differences and why there are differences. Um, and it's not just a case of, hey, I had it on-prem, I can just put it in the cloud and use it as is. Um, we really start, need to start focusing on what optimizations are actually available to you in the cloud. The other thing we'll look at is a bit of page diagnostics, discussing page performance and page weight and understanding you know, what's available and what those mean. Classic versus modern, and of course, then helpful links. So if we look at cloud versus on-prem, what you'll see is that in a typical on-prem environment, you have lower latency. You're on your local area network. It's also typically only available via VPN, though in some customers that do have scenarios where they do make it available publicly. Um, typically, it's available via VPN or virtual private network if you're not in the office, or via local network if you're in the office. Um, and the network distance is usually short, except for users that are remote. And in today's world, a lot of users work remotely, different geographies, um, and therefore, you know, obviously, this is where cloud comes in strongly into the environment. It has higher latency for sure, yes, the wider area network, but it's accessible from any location. We are affected by speed of light. You can't change speed of light today, and it is variable for users in different locations. And this is one of the reasons why some of the optimizations, as you'll see in the different episodes, as we go through them, through them is why we introduce them. Then if you look at farm size and caching from a typical on-prem space, you'll see that 5 to 10 servers is fairly typical. Um, some farms obviously have less, some have a lot more. Um, and also you have something called object cache available, which is in-memory cache available on the web front-end servers of your farm. Now don't worry if you don't know what those, what it, those are or what it is. It's more a case of it's something that's not available, um, and therefore we have to approach things differently in the cloud. In a farm in the cloud, we typically have hundreds of servers on average. Uh, object cache is not viable for most, and I say for most, you know, 95% of people of customers don't really hit those hundreds of servers um, frequently enough in order for in-memory caching to make sense. Then if you look at high availability and redundancy, if you look at an on-prem space, it is limited for most. Why? Because it's a cost factor. To have a DR, to have high availability is, is significantly higher cost uh, and from a maintenance and manageability perspective on-premise. Whereas in cloud, we have multiple farms located in different data centers. So at any point in time, you have high availability through the, obviously the servers uh, in the farm, and you have DR or redundancy um, for failover should anything occur. We fail over completely out of to a different data center as well. And that's something that's obviously very difficult to achieve in an on-premises space. Now, if we look at what's coming up next, I'll talk about page diagnostics for SharePoint. And really, this is an introduction to this, and maybe why. Why am I suddenly jumping to this? In the end of the day, the biggest things that affect performance are around what is on the page and how the page is loaded. Um, and from a perspective of helping you analyze this, we launched a tool called the Page Diagnostics for SharePoint. It has helped to analyze classic pages today. Yes, there is a modern version coming. It's not available today. And if you run this on a modern page, you will get some insights, but it will tell you this is a modern page and it really isn't designed for that purpose. It runs rules. And those rules are really around our recommended practices. And why we did that is we have all these practices published and those get updated frequently. But often they are found not found by customers or they're not followed and used and sort of taken, okay, they're recommendations. We shouldn't really do them. This tool is going to highlight the primary ones that we know impact your performance today. And while some of these items, yes, are in product items, they are part of the old legacy classic uh, code that we effectively use in cloud. And while we built modern, was to actually go and, and actually take that forward from, from these learnings and actually build modern in the cloud. It shows page load and heavy, item, heavy, heavy items. If you look under the network trace tab, You'll see that if you want to focus just on rules, you use the diagnostic tab and it'll highlight rules to you and tell you, hey, go correct the following things. These are not, not according to recommended practices. 
Yes, it doesn't cover 100% of everything. The idea is to get you down the most common paths and the common problems, and then you can obviously use other tools, which I'll show you one of them going forward now. Um, while this is not a tool session, this is really about introducing you to what you should and could, could do. What this tool also does, however, is it provides additional support data. One of those items is the correlation ID. Now, what, why is a correlation ID important is if we have a correlation ID, a support person. Now, this is not something that, um, that you can do with SharePoint Online. You could potentially do that on-prem, but in SharePoint Online, there's not much you can personally do with a correlation ID. But you can provide it to our support teams, and they are able to pull out different logs and information what we, from what we call the OLS logs in order to get further di diagnostic information. There is also additional modes, and I won't go into that for this. This is not a tool session. We will have one, and we will cover that in, in some of the episodes that you'll see going forward. What you'll see is another one is the F12 developer tools. And again, while this is not a tool session, the goal of this is to show you what page weight is. Now, if you have a look at the image on the right, what you'll see there is it's showing what we call the waterfall. That waterfall is part of this F12 developer tools, and in fact, for project managers, this is the, you would see that effect as well. But in a page, it's a very similar a similar approach. If you look at that, you'll see that it's staggered. A staggered waterfall means that we are waiting for each of those actions to complete in order to perform the next action. This is why we have certain optimizations we've done in the cloud, because the heavier the page, the slower the page will be. The more items we're waiting for in queue, the slower the page will be. And these are all factors that work towards what the page weight is. How heavy is the page is how long this page is going to take to load. What else does this F12 developer tools give you? It's more complex than the page diagnostic tool. Page diagnostic tool is meant for advanced users. The F12 developer tools is for advanced users to work with their development team or with their administrators. It takes that one step further so you can work out what is actually going on in this page. What elements are causing the page to load slowly and therefore impacting the weight of the page? So it gives you the waterfall, as you can see in the image, it gives you more de detailed details for deeper analysis. Right, so why are we lumping this all together and then throwing classic versus modern into the mix as well? Well, modern pages are more performant than classic. Why are they more performant? They were born in the cloud. They were designed for the cloud. They also use client-side rendering, so client-side object model. We therefore don't have to bring all of that data every time and all the different loading elements every time from the server to load them for every single user that's loading up a web page. In Classic, a lot of the items or elements on the page are brought back for every single user. And whilst we have obviously optimized some of these for the cloud, with the fact that modern is cloud-born, it is far more designed for performance. If you look at Classic as well, it's server-side rendering. So what happens on the server side? Everything has to go across the line. And because it's higher latency, we've got a distance to travel. And you'll see this as we go on and we talk about content delivery networks and we talk about network latencies. And as we go on these different episodes, you'll, we'll go through some of this. So don't worry if you don't get all this now. Then, of course, you've got to look at the fact that Classic is hard-coded page design. What does that mean? It means I have a master page, and I've built it, and it'll be one way. If I open it on my mobile phone, it won't look the same. It'll all be squished up on this tiny little screen. Whereas if I look again at modern, it's what you see is what you get. It is responsive design. You hear that keyword floating around, oh, responsive this, responsive that. Responsive design is really around adjusting to the page that I'm showing it on. In other words, if I'm on my mobile phone and I see it, it is a much smaller screen, and therefore it will adjust according to that, and, and it'll, it'll shift elements around so that they actually fit and make them readable on the mobile device. We've also got some accessibility elements in modern. If you have images, you're able to set taglines and, and, and prompted text to enable, you know, so that we can then cater for different, different levels and different people and different ways they need to work and different understandings. Uh, all of this is around making, making SharePoint more accessible to everyone. And a lot of that is customizable as well. It's also editor and author focused. So an editor, an author, it makes it far more seamless for them to work. Obviously designed for the mobile as well. And as I said already, it uses client sign rendering. Now, these are just a couple of points taken down, but I'm just going through them. And as you'll see, as we go through these episodes, you will learn about all of these elements and why they're so important. 
Then to end it all, we have helpful links. And these links, as you'll see, will appear again and again in these different seasons and episodes. Um, please follow us along. You'll see we, we, we're part of the PNP channel. And uh, feel free to post comments. Let us know what other things you'd like us to talk about. Thank you for your time today. Goodbye.